Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another cruise video. So today we are in Naples, Italy. We are going to be taking an excursion into Sorrento and Pompeii. So this is a nine hour excursion. We booked the long one. You can do four hours in Pompeii. This has a little Sorrento in, in front of that. They said it can be flip-flopped, it doesn't matter. We're going to a farm where they're gonna show us all kinds of uh, fun, how they make different things like mozzarella and then we'll be going into Pompeii. Mom is supposed to be coming on this excursion with me, but she has been feeling just the most jet lag she's ever felt. So she actually decided to stay back. I'm still going. She's not like sick sick. She just doesn't feel good. And instead of having a sea day the first day of this trip, we have a long port day. This is only one of three excursions we have booked for the entire 21 days gonna be on the pride so she's disappointed about go not going but Pompeii is a long four hours in the sun on cobblestones you don't feel good there's it's misery so it's all right we're gonna go I'm gonna have fun and uh, come back to the ship and meet her for dinner so right now just had some breakfast and I'm gonna head down to the Taj Mahal on deck two which is where you meet for all your excursions have to meet there at 7 30 so early morning but we're here in Naples from 8 to 5 I believe maybe 7 it's a long day so even if you didn't have an excursion booked there's plenty of time to uh, go all over the place so let's go ahead and go see what it looks like in the Taj how busy it is looks like when you get off the ship there's a little area down here to walk the port and there are quite a few ships in port today so there's probably gonna be quite a few people but the port here is more of an industrial port there's probably things to do in Naples um, outside of traveling but we'll be traveling on a shuttle on a bus probably into Sorrento and Pompeii so if you want to explore the city of Naples though there's I mean there's plenty to do here too. So here in the Taj, everybody waits. We're group 13. There are, I think 15 or 16 groups. So just wait for our number to be called. Right, we are off the bus. We are headed down to the little farm. Look at that view. We have the three S's together, the sun, the soil, and the sea. That makes a difference. So if somebody of the north of Italy tells you that they have the best lemon, that is not true, because lemon needs sun. So here they are very fruity and juicy inside and flavored outside in the skin. That's why here, also on the island of Capri and on the Amalfi coast, 
we produce a liquor called limoncello. Okay. Yes. Uh, I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> you are here to taste it. And you get not one, you get two. <coughs> two, we have a big heart. Nice. <laughs> you get one to sing and one to sleep. Eh? It's <laughs> yeah, but we have not only lemons, the lemon is the king. Here we grow also mandarin, oranges, peaches, apricots, walnuts, hazelnuts, cherries, sour cherry, olive figs, and grapes. Wow. You want to eat again? <laughs> you want to eat faster? Yeah. <laughs> I can do it very fast. If you like, also in Italian. Yeah. yeah? Very easy. Tutti frutti farm. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's the right word for this place. We have one problem, just one, the space. But if you talk about the soil and the climate, we could grow all what we want. But the space is not enough. That's why it's mixed up a lot. And believe me, it's difficult to harvest the different fruits in the different seasons. So, so the wine is produced here. And have you seen when you're wrapped up with the coach where the vineyards have to grow? grow? Mm -hmm. Have you seen vineyards? No. Because here we have no space. And the only way to catch the sun, they have to grow over the tree. So after, when you drive again down, have a look on the side and over the tree. So that means that here every farmer has to climb on a letter with a basket on their shoulder to harvest all the grapes from up. It's logical that it's not enough what they pick from a side. At the same time, they have to buy other grapes and they have to mix the wine because they can't find always the same type when they're growing in their garden. Here the farmer has San Nicola grape and last have mixed with Anianico and Pini Rosso. It's all Italian, but you have to blend. So that means that the wine that is now on your table waiting for you is a wine without name. Because when we mix, we blend, we can't live on it. So we call it very simply Vino della Casa, the house wine. You know that normally the typical mozzarella here in this region, in the region of Campania, is produced from buffalo milk. So they call it mozzarella di bufala. Believe me, that you can't find one buffalo in all Sorrento. Because <laughs> <laughs> these are water buffaloes, they need the space. They need to lay outside, we don't have the space. They live very close to us. They're at the end of the Amalfi Coast by Pestum Salerno, or north by Naples by Caserta. There they have the flatland, the big area, and all the animals outside. Here in Sorrento, and not only this farm, but on the whole peninsula, it's made from cow milk. So when you're wrapped up, just in front, where you came in, there is a stable with seven cows. You saw them. Mm -hmm. It's a farm. It's a real, it's a real farm. If you smell that. She gets totally from the seven cows in the morning, 60, 70 liters of milk. The same amount also in the evening because they get milk twice a day. She put in the milk rennet. Rennet is a starter, is an enzyme. After two and a half hours, the milk with the rennet, look what happens. This was liquid milk, and now it's curved. Yeah, but this was liquid, and now it's cheese. Yeah, now it's coagulated. Oh, yeah, I love this word because it sounds professional. Yeah, yeah, she knows. Coagulated sounds professional. But you're right, it's curd. Eh? There is a leftover liquid that is the whey. So we have curds and whey. And she's a little bit smuffy. <laughs> what she has to do now, she has to separate the liquid. So she drains all the liquid out, the whey, and she boils the whey on the side up. When the whey boils very slowly on the top of it, breaks up another type of cheese. It's a light white cream that she has to scream off. It looks like this. If you love Italian food, you can tell me the name of the light cream Italian cheese. Bravo, it's ricotta. Who said that? Ricotta. Are you Italian? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ricotta. Do you know what means ricotta translated in English? You don't know. No, it's the same word in English. It means recooked. Recooked. Cooked again. It's not a name of a cheese. It's the process what gives the name to the cheese. <clears throat> now the way have to be boiled up all the time, and all the time raise the cream on the top. It's light because the fat is in the curd, but ricotta is full of protein. We use it a lot here. We use it to fill in cannelloni, ravioli, lasagna, or we bake cakes. Yeah, but there's now a second use of it. You have to put the weight back to the curd. So what here is separated, there comes together again, because now the heat of the weight is changing the consistency of the coagulated curd. You will see in a few seconds, it looks like a dough, soft and elastic. 
And it's naturally the old way here to show you. So in the past, every family did it this, this way. Now it's rare to find ladies like Marie in the farm who spend the time to make a cheese. Too much time it takes, four or five hours. And it's not so also rare to find itself, you find a mozzarella everywhere. You find it in a round shape like a bowl, filled in the bag with the liquid. But this is very normal. She doesn't like it and she doesn't make it. She have different shapes here for different uses. The one that she most make is a trecha. Trecha means braid or plat. It's a nice round braided ring. It's a shape that the people love to buy because it's nice for the presentation. You first enjoy to see and then you enjoy to eat. That's why she braided. She has learned from her mother. She's the third generation. She was 16 when she started to learn how to make it. And she makes the cheese since she was 16. Now she's 39. <laughs> 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 and it's not show time, it's real time. She makes it every day, seven days a week, and that for the whole year long, so no vacation. Sometimes she said to me, Rosa, I make this eight times in a week because I dream in the night about it. <laughs> this is very nice to work it when it's cold because you warm up the hands when it's cold outside. But we had a long summer. Just this week is a cool down a little bit the temperature. But a week before it was terrible. We had four months of really heat and humid. Uh, it was not so nice. And now look how she's braiding it. And if you want, you can take a nice picture with Maria and her braid. She loves it part. She doesn't speak English, but hold on just one second for your picture. Just wait. Okay. She wants to tell you something very special to your all and this in English. So listen to her and then take the picture after this. But listen. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, we are done at the farm. It was fabulous. I definitely liked the honey and the mozzarella the best, but I know a lot of people really liked the limoncello. We have an hour ride to Pompeii now, and then we will walk around there. Oh, nope, I forgot. We're gonna actually walk around Sorrento for an hour, then Pompeii. Shopping.
right, y'all. So we are at Pompeii. We've got our little earpieces and we're headed in. He said, with well, the way the city's built, when it rained, it would clean the streets. So these blocks were to walk on so your feet wouldn't get dirty. Huh. He said all of these were shops and these little holes on the edges were so that the shopkeepers could tie a stick and create an awning over the openings of their shop. Hold poles up for a tent. Shade the front of your shop. I wonder if these were, well, they must have been number 19. What the hell? That's what I'm wondering, if the other ones were shops. Yeah. Because there's been a few with little arches that would have been yeah. maybe a little stove of some kind. Sense. Hopefully he'll tell us. And when you remove, how you say in English? Uh, hatchets? Okay. Hatchets, okay. There is another huge tank. So you could clean the tank and then you can pull up the water that you need for the houses. Mm. Well, I don't, uh, the most part of the houses, uh, uh, the first part that you see, the modern house, I mean, nowadays, uh, you find a kitchen on a sitting room and uh, the uh, the side for bathroom uh, it's uh, it, it's even no uh, the opposite in Romani here 
because the bedroom are located in the entrance. Okay, that's why also tomorrow. And was a much much important the space for guests and uh, for visitors. And it's a Okay, if the owner wanted uh, a privacy, could be closed with text here, and uh, the slaves could be used the corpus, right? And uh, he supported the very, very well the uh, frescoes. Okay, the most of part of frescoes represent the mythological elements, like the horse of the Trojan War. I think, in the, that one. Okay. It's a very, yes, it's a very, very nice. Uh, on the left side, you can recognize the two theatrical masks. The most part of the doors are made with the vegetable. An area and a mixed zone <laughs> for uh, and a kind of a social pond. And here you can recognize decoration <laughs> in a statue very well preserved here nearby the wall. Oh, wow. oh wow! And you can also recognize. Was the, the white zone, the the light, the light. Yeah. Yeah. So like little night lights. Yeah. <laughs> the Bonanza, the Thermal Bath, and the Forum area. One hour, 40 minutes. Wow. Okay, for the next time. <laughs> <laughs> and the next time, and the next time. Okay.
Moreover, it's included in the archaeological park Villa dei Misteri with very impressive frescoes. Okay, and the city wall, long three kilometers, and the bigger amphitheater. Okay, so time by time you can uh, use put one more pieces. All right, y'all, we are back. That was a long excursion, and all I wanted to do was get some dinner and lay down when we got back to the ship, but I had to tell mom all about it. I'm so sad she couldn't come, but at least it's a really good group of people, and I got to talk to a lot of other people who are going to be on the trip with us for the next nine days, so that was a plus. I really enjoyed Pompeii. Um, I'm glad we were only there for an hour because you know your girl gets too hot, and my knee is always killing me. So that was, it was a good amount of time. It was crazy though, how much of Pompeii we didn't get to see how huge it is. I did not uh, understand that in my brain, how actually just big the town is until we got there. And even at the end, when Archangelo was showing us the map of how big the entire place is versus what we'd actually walked through, I was like, I felt like we walked through way more than that. I actually really enjoyed Sorrento as well, and I was glad we had a little bit of free time there. I'm surprised I didn't buy a single souvenir all day, but it was a lot of fun. I really liked the farm and watching them make the mozzarella. I don't know which part would have been my favorite, but I enjoyed all three parts. I'm glad I did the tour that had the farm, the town, and Pompeii. Uh, some people just went to Pompeii for the whole day, four or nine hours, either a half day or a full day. That would have been way too much for me. Um, so I'm really glad for what we did. And I, I think it was the right tour for me. I wish mom could have come. But at least tomorrow is a sea day, so hopefully she'll be able to catch up on her rest and go with us on the rest of the tours this week. So we'll see y'all then. I am not even sure... Maybe Dubrovnik is next. We've got like three or four ports in a row after our sea day tomorrow. So I don't even know where we're going, but I'm excited. So we'll see you then. Bye.